Hi everyone, Chris Buttle here. As you know, we do lots of videos about COVID and safety protocols on campus. Many of you have probably seen someone wearing a mask like this and in your mind you've said, wait a second, that's not right. But you've also had the question, how do I approach that person in a way that I'm comfortable with and that actually gets somewhere where we all actually follow the right protocols here on campus. So today we're gonna to take a few minutes to talk with an expert about what it means to adhere to the safety protocols and tips that you can use yourself when intervening with somebody. Let's head in. So here I am in the Faculty of Education. I'm really pleased today to have a chance to talk to one of our own experts at McGill and I'm very pleased to introduce Tina Montreux who's an Associate Professor in Educational and Counseling Psychology. So Tina, thanks for taking time today. One of the questions we often get is about how to kind of approach a situation with somebody where maybe they're not really following the protocols. Mm -hmm. We talk about masks a lot, but there might be other things as well. So do you have any kind of general tips on how to approach someone if they're not following COVID protocols? Absolutely. So I think the first thing is just to assume that the person was intending on following the instructions, but they either forgot or are not getting them right. And then I think pay attention to how you're feeling. If you're feeling on edge with with the interventions that you're about to make, probably best to maybe take a step back, allow someone else to maybe intervene at a later time. We wanna basically make the person open to our intervention. So I think first and foremost, even if we're wearing a mask, is to smile. Because smile will help you adjust your tone, make it more approachable, more collegial, and also just greet the individual. A lot of the times if we just step in and give the instruction or the remark, without first being you know, kind and approachable, that might get a different response from the individual. And I think if you have a lived experience as well, like maybe having forgotten yourself to wear your mask, is a great opportunity to validate and really reassure the person on what you're about to share to them. And you know, I think uh, uh, during the pandemic, a lot of people felt isolated. So if you have a good interaction, one positive thing is you've connected with another person and that's always a good thing. And I love your point about smiling. We smile with our eyes as well as our, our mouths. So that's Absolutely. a really great point. So sometimes things don't go as well as you'd like and maybe people are a little more standoffish or their body language suggests they didn't like what you said. What might you do then? Yes, so I think first and foremost, again, you have to approach the situation calmly. Again, not assume that it, there was any wrongdoing, but rather it was just forget, forgotten or you know, a, an honest mistake. Yep. And I think then is to maybe just you know, say what you had to say, maybe ask the person to correct the behavior or the actions. And if you feel like the person is getting upset, you want to name that. I'm so sorry, I noticed that you're getting a little bit upset. I just want to reassure you that my intentions were. So I think you really have to make sure that you reassure the person that your goal is not to attack them. And again, like we were saying before, maybe just kind of bridging in with you having been in that situation before. I think people will most likely connect with you if they feel it's relatable. And if you're genuinely just interested in assisting them to just make everybody safe. Yeah, that's great advice. And, and one thing we didn't touch on earlier, but what is the best thing to say? If you see someone with their mask down, I mean, my assumption is you would just go up and say, excuse me, I just noticed that your mask was below your nose. Are you okay just putting it up? Is, is that the right thing to say? Is there other approaches that you would suggest? Yeah, I think, you know, we have to keep in mind that, you know, our goal when we're giving people advice is to know that there's limits in what we can control. Like I control my tone, how I approach the person, what I say and how I say it. But in the end, you know, if the person decides not to listen to you, that's within their control. And sure. there are other measures that we have at our disposal, if that's the case. But to go back to your question, I think maybe sort of saying, oh, can you guess what I'm about to tell you? Ah. Or can you sort of like, sorry, we don't know each other, but you know, maybe this is an opportunity to get, get acquainted through you know, our sanitary measures. Yeah. So I think if you approach it with a kind of a bit of humor, like sort of like relax yourself about it, I think people are more likely to sort of be attuned to what you have to say and respond in a collegial manner. That's great advice and one that I'll use. The idea of guess what I'm gonna say and see how they react, that's really <laughs> great. So, okay, the third scenario, the last scenario might be where you kind of get like an aggressive response mm -hmm. where someone is like, stay out of my face. I do not believe in X, Y, or Z. Yeah. You're really offending me by what you're saying. What do you suggest in that kind of scenario? Yeah, I think right there what you have to do is first of all just notice and name what you're observing, but factually. So kind of just say, I noticed you're very upset or you look upset. And kind of again reframe what your intentions are. Because sometimes we're like, well, they're going to know what I'm trying to say. But I think we have to use your words and verbalize what we're trying to convey as a message. And again, I think it's knowing when it's worth insisting 
and trying to sort of like convince the person and when it's just probably safest for everyone to just walk away. Yeah, and then like we said, you could call campus security or report it if you need to, but sometimes just walking away is okay as well. I think so, sadly, <laughs> in some cases. Some cases, yeah. yeah. Tina, thank you so much for taking time today to talk about this. It's on a lot of people's minds. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me with you guys. Great.